Good morning, everyone. My name is Adonis Abdullah, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of HodRoute Analytics. So, everyone in this room has been a fan of a losing team, and I think we can agree that it stinks. But imagine how much worse that feeling is if you're a player or a coach of that team. And this is especially true for those on small college teams below the D1 level. For 60,000 small college teams across the country, from 4,000 colleges representing 2.4 million players, they struggle to be competitive because they have limited resources, spend way too many hours trying to find data, and struggle to understand most analytic tools that are currently on the market. Ultimately, this means less revenue for the team, fewer transfer opportunities for the players, and weakened job security for coaches. So, we developed Home Team. This is an online platform that first saves users time by offering easy to find pre-populated data and scouting reports on their opponents, reducing research hours by 90% and allowing players to spend less time behind the desk and more time in the gym improving their craft. With that, it also improves player performance with our easy to use analytics and those reports that tell them what they should be working on throughout the week. We boost their ratings by seven points, and you can think of their performance ratings kind of like school grades, one to 100, 90 and above is an A. And this was the case with the 1,400 users we've had to date. Um, and most importantly, we help teams win. Um, by improving the player performance, we boost teams' wins by 15%. And this was the case with the 12 teams that we had during our beta test last spring in baseball, basketball, and football. So far, we've been able to grow exponentially. Um, during our beta test that I mentioned last spring, we had 200 NCAA users, and a quarter of them were paying $10 per month per athlete. Um, and since then, since launching our MVP in October, we've added uh, an additional 1,000 athletes to the platform while retaining 60% of our beta users, and we've been growing on average 120% month over month with our user base. So not only are they interested in it and they're coming to it, but they're finding value in it and they're coming back for more. Um, and this whole thing was started by three students from a small college who got tired of seeing their team lose every week. Um, it's myself as the CEO, my background, I did finance on Wall Street, tech out west. Ty Burling, our chief data officer, he's worked in the MLB as well as NASCAR. And then our residential MBA, Zach Alford, um, rounding out our team. And so this whole thing works with the freemium subscription model. Um, the players, that's our target market, that's our go-to, they're our number ones, and they want to improve their performance. They want to go from being a Division II or Division III athlete to a Division I, maybe professional athlete someday. And then the secondary are the coaches. They want to win games, make sure they have a job next year, don't we all? And this starts with a free subscription to our platform with limited access to our tools, and then we use that limited access to try and funnel them towards a paid monthly subscription. And that's the basis of our revenue model, with residual revenue coming from web ads and data licensing agreements. Um, and we're beginning B2C because it's really fast. We use social media and trade shows to connect directly with the players, meet them where they are. And we connect with about 20,000 athletes each week using social media without spending any ad dollars. Um, this has a really short sales cycle, and we're able to add new users every hour. We're doing this right now to validate product market fit and create some B2B penetration because we do recognize that B2B is the gold standard in sports tech and that's where we want to expand to in the next few years. Uh, and this is a large market with global potential. I mentioned earlier the 2.4 million athletes, that's our current market. And at the annual price we're thinking, that makes for about a $600 million opportunity. But we don't think that this is just a college thing. We also believe this is high school sports and we don't think this is just U.S. sports, but it's really global institutions. And we estimate that there are about 40 million of these athletes that fit into this box, creating a total of $10 billion opportunity. And our competitors have completely overlooked the small market sports space. Um, and this has really left our target market having to do everything manually. With Google searches and Excel sheets, it's cheap, it's accessible, but it takes a lot of time and it's not really that effective when it comes to preparing for the next game and making sure that they can perform at their highest level. And this gives us several advantages. First, it's the early movers advantage. We're the first ones going into this space and we're able to create some loyalty with these users, which is really important in the sports world. We're building the largest small market sports database, 
So not only can we serve the most users right now um, with below the D1 level, but when our competitors do try and come to this space in the next few years, which they said they want to, we'll be there to go ahead and sell them the data. So even when they try to take from us, we'll still make some money off of that. And then our predictive tools will also be the most advanced because they'll have the most back, backlog and history and usage. Um, and in our current pace, we believe we're going to be able to break even by next year around the 25,000 total user mark or 2,000 uh, paid users. And with that, we are raising right now to expedite that product validation. We want to raise $500,000 to make sure that we hit that 2,000 user mark within the next 18 months. That'll let us hit 500,000 in ARR as well as create that B2B penetration that I mentioned earlier. Um, and with that, my name is Adonis Abdullah. We are Hot Route Analytics, and I welcome any feedback. So, Adonis, great pitch. I mean, fantastic flow. Um, love the whole concept, quite frankly. I mean, this is a little bit in my wheelhouse, right? So. We're seeing a lot of applications of AI in this world right now, data anal analysis, kind of prepping, similar types of uh, services. So I guess the one thing that I'd like to learn a little bit more about is kind of the functionality of the service offering that you have. Yeah. What, where are your users finding value? Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, so our users, they like to come in and it's really like three times a week. Um, for football, we can start there with like, They'll come in before, like the beginning of the week, they want to get an idea of what their opponents are going to do. So they're using our scouting reports to see if they're a wide receiver, how does this DB like to play? What are their tendencies? Pause you right there. Where does that data that you guys have come yeah. from? We scrape that um, We scrape across the internet. We use different public sources such as public databases, team archives, and even sometimes YouTube videos to try and pick information up on these players. Is that a manual? No, that's that exercise or AI kind of driven? Yeah. yeah, all of that's AI machine learning that's picking up on that. And so, yeah, they'll use the scattering reports, they'll get, you know, quick briefing, then they'll go to the next step, which is according to the data, what should I be practicing throughout the week um, in order to, you know, just further that advantage. And then the end off the week, looking at how they actually performed compared to how they should have performed and what that can mean for like their NIL value or what they need to do for next week. So that's kind of the flow um, generally. Fantastic. Um, t a little bit about, so you scrape the data, there, therefore it's, it's public data when you start, right? So your manipulation of it creates a, a licensable database out there? Yeah, yeah. And I think uh, our ability to use public data is one of our main advantages. Uh, our competitors, they started you know, 20, 30 years ago when that data wasn't really there. And so for them, they had to gather information with really expensive hardwares, either camera systems or wearable technology. And it, it's a really big overall for them to try and switch over to that public data. And so for us to be able to come in, create you know, very similar analytics to what they're able to do, but without any cost to us and you know, a cheaper cost to our users, I think that's a big advantage for us. And one last question for me. And yeah. we can open up to anybody, but is it, a, was I seeing it, it's kind of a two-sided market or two-way market there. You've got the institution at the NCAA, I think you referred to them as. So you've got an institutional market and an individual market? I think or, is it, or is it all kind of the institutional market and then it's per player? Well, it's actually currently right now, it's, we sell to the players and they will sign up on their own volition for the subscription. So. That's the focus right now. It will probably open up to where we're trying to sell to institutions. We recognize like, you know, we can get a two, three year contract for all their players. And, you know, it's really good for us as opposed to going after each person. Yeah, but right now it's, you know, individual players to go really quick, quickly. That was really good. Like you're a great presenter yeah. and your slides really served you well. Like one of the best things about your charts was that every slide told said one thing and it said really simply in a big, like it was really good. Um, so it seems like you know what you want to say, right? Um, so there was one thing you talked about that I want to dig into, which is you said 60% of your beta users stick around. Yeah, so you lose 40%. Yeah, why do you lose the 40? So in the spring, the big sport then is baseball. And we just haven't gotten back to baseball season. So 
there is seasonality to this, yes. Yeah. And so, yeah, the, and I think the reason why they haven't came, come back, you know, is the day one users saying like they wanted to come back was just because it wasn't close enough to the season. And seasonality is something that we want to address. And so we're thinking about how do we help them improve their game during the off season or, you know, just something like that, offering di different discounts to make sure that, like they're signed up for a year instead of month by month. And so we're trying to stay ahead. We'll charge them a lot more, right? Like double the monthly price and give people a deal <coughs> if they pay up front for a year or two years, right? Because everything that you pitched sounded really good. Like 40% churn sounds really bad, right? And so you, you sold that as 60% of our people opt in and stick around. I heard that as 40% of them bail. And I'm like, Adonis has a leaky bucket a little bit, right? And your pricing model, given that it's cheap and it's month to month, it lets people, it makes it easy to rotate out, right? Yeah. And so like I would, I would advocate to you, you should model what it looks like if it's 20 a month, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe 150 for a year and 120 a year for two years, kind of thing, and see what happens. Right, because it, it might make getting your 500K ARR way easier. You know what I mean? Yeah, good. Um, and so I just I want to go back to what Scott said. So I'm a fan of Wofford football, right? So Wofford plays Charleston Southern, right? And no one cares or pays attention. But you've got an AI that watches it, and then it tells dreaded Furman, here's what Wofford's going to do next week, right? Yeah. And it specifies that so that the Furman linebackers could know, oh, here are their tendencies and here are the things you need to look out for. Yes, absolutely. And um, we have some tools in it. They're kind of early right now. I mean, they're, well, they're early right now. But we also have some tools that, like, play by play can tell you, like, this is the next play call they're likely to do. Therefore, this is the adjustment you need to make real time in game. We rolled that out with baseball, where it was, like, with pitches for them. Um, you know, this guy's going to throw the curveball down and in on the next play. So, yeah. So, a million years ago, I covered a college football team for a newspaper. And was the it Wofford? No, it was the University of Arizona. We were pretty good that year. Um, the, uh, and the coach hired a retired NFL scout to scout us, right? And he said, you have some, the scout said, you have some distinct tendencies. You do the same things over and over. We all do, yeah. right? And... I don't know if your opponents have picked up on it yet, but we have. And like, that feels like a product you could sell to coaches pretty yeah. easily, because they need to self-scout. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think that's something that, you know, probably, hopefully work to over time, so. My quick feedback a little bit, and again, I thought you did a fantastic job, and the presentation, all in all, was great. I would add a little bit of that functionality yeah. towards the front. So people can really envision the type of the value of the service that you're bringing to the table because I can see that value. Yeah. I can see you building a customer base here. Um, yeah, and I think I, you're on to something and here. I think the audience has some questions, but I do want to ask you: Do you know David Chadwick and the guys at Real Recruit? So they're here in Charlotte and they're building a business that's not competitive to you, but the exact same target market. And David is a lovely guy, and I think if you sat with him for an hour, yeah. like it would be an educational thing for you because he's he sort of started a business like this eight years ago, right? So he's been doing it for a little while. So afterwards, let's connect and I'll introduce you to him. Who wants to say something to Adonis? Yeah, you do. Hey, thanks a lot for <coughs> presenting. Um, have you thought any about the, the value for um, odds makers or professional gamblers? So the question was about odds makers and gamblers. Yeah, no, definitely we have. Um, I mean, if we're able to predict play by play, we should be able to predict who wins the game, you know, in theory. Or even but, like some bets you can make, how many touches somebody's getting for, you know, goals, yeah. Score. yeah, and we've thought about it, but we all, like that's also a really crowded space right now. Like there's so many places, you know, trying to do that same thing. So we're steering away from it right now. But, I mean, me personally, it's a fun thing to mess around with. Um, it's not legal here, so I shouldn't say that. Cut that. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. Who else? Andy Greenish. Adon, so great presentation. I, I would think that any athletic team, professional, collegiate, would want your services. I mean, is, based upon your research, how have a lot of the people been doing it currently? Are they manually pulling it? Like, 
like you said, from Google and the spreadsheet? Yeah, that's absolutely how it is. We've talked with over 100 you know, coaches and players in the co collegiate level, and yeah, they're just spending hours each week. They might say, like, this coach, like, go find all the data you can. The next coach, like, you know, format it in Excel nicely. Then the last guy will try to interpret it. And it's like it'll take them the first four days of the week, like, to finally get to Friday and know what's going to happen on Saturday. And so, yeah, that's kind of where it's at right now. And it's really slow. And it's because they don't have the money to, like, hire more people or pay for, like, the, you know, these huge platforms that are out there for, like, the pro teams right now. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine light bulb clicked on for me, I would, if I were you, I'm not, I would go after athletic directors at schools. I mean, because they're the ones that have, you know, higher decision making, they've got the money, yeah. as opposed to targeting college students, which don't typically, you know, have a few dollars to rub together. Yeah. And adding this, you know, is, is another luxury, but that's just my opinion. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's, that's definitely an interesting avenue. And uh, like, I think with that B2B, like, that's probably what it would look like going to the ADs and you know having them foot the bill instead of the players themselves. Yeah, no, I think you're on to something. Good luck. Thank you. Awesome win. Let's give it up for Adonis. Thank you.